From anatomy to anesthesiology, from pathology to pharmacology, from microbiology to medicine, a one-man resource to the world of health sciences. Welcome to Dr. Paul's Medical Lectures. A practicing physician, Dr. Paul offers you essential insights on diseases afflicting millions of people around the world. For today's lecture, here is Dr. Paul. Today I want to talk a few minutes about uh, MRSA, the methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Very, very important topic. The skin and soft tissue infections, I will say SSTI for the sake of brevity. So skin and soft tissue infections are growing high and sometimes they become a systemic infection causing fever and septicemia. And in these cases, you should treat the patients, otherwise they will go into life-threatening advancing infections. So there are two things, methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus and there is a methicillin sensitive Staphylococcus aureus. And the MSSA is an easy thing because we can treat it with general antibiotics, whereas MRSA like methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus uh, it, it needs a special uh, things to consider. Now, when we treat them, we use usually Bactrim or uh, tetracyclines or clindamycin. These are the oral agents to treat MRSA. But when we use in a hospitalized patient, it's vancomycin. You see the vancomycin. There are other agents like uh, linozolate, tezacycline, uh, those are the agents uh, um, which are useful when the patient cannot tolerate vancomycin. Okay, let's go one by one. Now, the recent rapid increase in uh, MRSA infections like uh, the community acquired MRSA infections, there is a recent spikes. There is uh, the bacteria maybe having the mutations or the doctors are not following the precautions they should like washing their hands whatever there is the 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 MRSA is going high so nowadays we have to keep MRSA in our mind whenever we treat a patient with these infections if it is an external wound you should always take a culture and uh, there are other uh, risk factors like patients with diabetes, septicemia, chronic kidney disease, homosexuals, men having sex with men, or people who are in hemodialysis. Uh, you, you, those are the risk factors. And when these patients have risk factors, you should always uh, consider this problem uh, more accurately. Although many patients with community acquired uh, uh, MRSA infections, they describe the initial symptoms in a light fashion. When the signs and symptoms like uh, the progress, when there is like a uh, systemic infection, you will see that uh, fever, tachycardia, septicemia and all those problems. So now let me talk about diagnosis. These symptoms, when you see them, always go for the comorbid conditions like a patient has any neutropenia, any cirrhosis, any diabetes. When you see these comorbid conditions, there is high likelihood to get infections like yeast, fungi, pseudomonas and klebsia. And that complicates the, the, the treatment profile because when the patient has diabetes, and if it is uncontrolled, then the patient is at high risk. And if he has this uh, wound infection, then you need to go aggressively to treat that problem. Otherwise, patient may go into uh, a more serious cellulitis or septicemia or even amputation. Right, so you know, we know these things. But when there is rapidly progressive life-threatening infections, you should always call for a surgery referral because the whole tissue has to be removed otherwise it will kill the patient in no time. So when you see uh, them in the clinical symptoms or go for the labs 
if you see a high WBC count, high neutrophil count, and uh, a decrease in serum bicarbonate, and if an uh, increase in creatinine uh, kinase level, if there is an increase in the uh, C-reactive protein level, CRP, and uh, those are the red flags in the labs. So look for red flags in the signs and symptoms. Look for red flags in uh, labs. Look for a red, flag, red flags in the patient history for any uh, comorbid condition. So those things collectively should alert us to look for the possibility of uh, a serious infection going under the surface. And uh, go for a wound culture whenever there is a bruising wound and uh, look for the sensitivities because sensitivities determine everything. Now the treatment. When you see when indicated the problem the SSTIs that is skin and soft tissue infections in most of the cases if the problem is uh, like uh, a normal problem go for oral antibiotic Oral antibiotics, as I said, Bactrim, Trimethoprim, Sulfamethoxazole. Some people call Bactrim or Septra, whatever it is. But Trimethoprim, Sulfamethoxazole, it's number one. Then tetracyclines. You can use tetracyclines also if the patient can't tolerate it. Then clindamycin. So those three things, folks. Bactrim, tetracyclines, Clendamycin, these three are the oral agents. Whenever the patient cannot take these oral agents, you should go for IV agents. And on the top of the list, we have vancomycin. So the vancomycin is the first choice because, I mean, none of them are cheap, but that is the cheapest among those most expensive drugs. So vancomycin is the first line. Uh, antibiotic when you treat MRSA. Then comes clindamycin, then quinolones, then linozolid, then tigicycline, then daptomycin. Those are the other IV medications you have to. If you use clindamycin, you should do D-zone test. That test, the D-zone test should be performed because to identify patients with inducible clindamycin resistance. So always do D-zone test when you use clindamycin. Then linozolid. Linozolid is uh, effective against uh, MRSA. It is also effective against uh, MSSA. So both sensitive and uh, resistant uh, methicillin can be used uh, for these infections. And, uh, but the problem is linozolid is a very expensive medication, so like $1,700 for a 10-day course. So the linozolid, whenever the patient uh, cannot use vancomycin, go for linozolid for a MRSA. And that helps a lot of patients. So linozolid, folks, but there are two things. Number one, linozolid can raise the blood pressure. Remember that point. It can increase the blood pressure. And the second thing is, it can cause a serotonin syndrome. So it can increase blood pressure and it can cause serotonin syndrome because it uh, obstructs the serotonin uptake. So linozolid, um, the other thing is, uh, it should be used with caution in patients with chronic kidney disease because it is renal excreted. Now let us go to the tigicycline. Tigicycline is indicated for the treatment of for complicated SSTIs caused by MSSA. Thanks for listening. For more medical videos, please visit us at www.drpaul.org and take time to browse through hundreds of health videos we regularly post on our site. If you are preparing for USMLE, PLAB, and other medical exams, make sure you visit our website to browse through our videos explaining the essential points you need to know before taking these examinations. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org. Thank you, and may God 
richly bless you. Are you preparing for USMLE? Please do not waste thousands of dollars on training courses. Get the books written by Dr. Paul with the student-to-student -student tips and memory aids. The success will be yours, and you will soon realize your dream of becoming a physician in the United States. If you are preparing for Step 2 Clinical Skills, study USMLE Smasher, a guide helping thousands of medical students to pass this examination. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org.